So look at here. This is DSS. Where is it? Dynamic system settings. Suppose you have defined a DSS entry, DSS rule, and you have given the URL. When you move this DSS to next environment, you'll be changing the URL in the next environment. Like this, every environment you are going to change the URL. This is one practice. Instead of dynamic system settings, there is another rule called system settings. System settings. So if you go to system settings rule, look at here. You will create a system settings rule and you define the URL here. The value description can be anything. So value will be URL here. This is development URL, let's say. Dev URL you will give here. And this is QA URL. This is UAT URL. It can be pre-prod URL or post-prod URL. This can be production URL. Like this, multiple URLs you will provide and save. You will move this. You will read this value, get data system settings. You are going to read it into your application, like how you are reading DSS. Now, see at one time, when you are using, when you are reading the value from this role, it will read one of these values. It will not read five URLs. Suppose you are working in development environment, it will read the URL from, generically I'm saying, but actually as per PRPC definition, this is, case study environment and this is development this is qa or testing this is uat this is production when you are doing case study environment server it will read the url from here if you are doing development it will read the url from development so pure server it will read the third url uat server it will read fourth url production server it will read fifth url so advantage of DSS is all URLs in one rule. As per the server on which the code is running, it will read only one of the URLs. Then how does PRPC knows? Suppose when I'm executing my uh, connect so, and I'm reading the value in the activity and assign it to parameter and passing. When I'm executing connect so, it has to read the URL. Development URL, it will read this URL and use the URL for the connection. That will work fine. But how does PRPC knows? It has to read only from two. Why not three? Why not four for development? Same code when it executes in production, it will read the URL from five. So the numbers what you see here, these are called production level. These are called production level. Look at here. When we install Pega, when we install Pega any, any, on any server, you take a PRPC product and install on server one, two, three, four, five. Multiple servers you have installed. Once you install the servers, a PRPC on the server, you need to open one of the rule called system. You need to open one of the rule called system. System rule will have already predefined instance. It defines the production level. Now, you have to give one. If, if you install PRPC on case study server, once you install, open this rule and give the number one. Save it, close it. After you install into development server, open this rule and give number Two. Similarly, QA server, open this rule and give the number three. UAT server, open this rule, give number four. Production, give the number five after you install. So this will be there constantly. See, while you are accessing, PRPC will read the production level from this rule. If you are in case study, case study environment, what is the production level that will be read is one. Correct? One. Production level that is going to be read is one. On the current server, production level is one. Now, taking that value 1, it will come to this rule and which is matching with 1. 1 is matching. That URL it will take. Suppose the same piece of code executing in production. Production, what is the system value? 5. Taking the value 5, it will come to this rule and match the value 5. Where is 5? This is 5. It is going to take the URL 5 matching with the system production level number on which you are running the code. This is clear, everyone? So like this, PRPC is going to identify what number URL should be read based on the system rule that is already defined on the current PRPC server. Okay. So the server has number three from this rule. Third URL will be read. You cannot add more levels. That is not possible. Okay. This is clear, everyone. So it has a disadvantage. What is the disadvantage? 
you cannot add suppose you are using multiple environments not at a time you are using multiple suppose you have case study development qa uat reproduction production post production some other servers also you need to open this rule and every time maybe uh, maybe it is difficult to define multiple not more than five servers here so we don't use this if you want to use it you can use it but generally we don't prefer to use it we will go to dss some people will define tables and they will read into data pages and they use data pages at node level because urls are common to every request okay this is clear everyone Sasha, how do we get this uh, system setting into the activity how do we get system setting into the uh, next row. same function you use the same function it will read okay no problem so like this you have to go ahead and get the value from here yeah now we have three approaches in defining the endpoint urls we identified three approaches one is dss one is system settings another one is data page reading it from a table okay so but which approach you follow depends on your tech leads and when you are developing it depends on your business requirement as well okay so, but Pega systems recommends what? Dynamic system settings instead of data pages or instead of rules should be avoided. Go to data instances. That is the idea. Uh, you should define fourth approach is there. What is the fourth approach? You can define in config files. Your config files alternate is BSS. 